Hi everyone, so I'm finally comparing these two phones and I know a lot of people are waiting for this comparison because they are the best compact flagship phone both of the ecosystem has to offer right now. Yes, there is a price difference and iPhone 14 Pro is almost double the price than S23 in many of the countries except US. So if I just talk about the price, S23 will be a clear winner. But uh, is it that easy to declare a winner? We'll talk about that later. Let's start from the in-hand feel of these phones. So they are more or less identical, but this feels a little bit more premium because of the heft. It has that stainless steel on the side, but that does not make S23 feel cheap. Uh, I mean, it has aluminium on the side. They both feel premium, but if you want a little bit more premiumness, this is going to give you that. Uh, from back, they are both matte finish. Uh, but this is I think more comfortable to handle because it is more narrower it has a different aspect ratio and the sides are a little bit round so if you want more comfort I think this is going to be a better bet this is also lighter so the chances of dropping this phone will be much less than iPhone 14 Pro but if you just want a little bit higher premium feel I think the stainless steel is going to give you that. If I talk about the display, they both are 6.1 inch AMOLED display. The chances are this is also made by Samsung, but we don't know. So on paper, they are similar, but actually the tuning is quite different. So this will give you that punchy color. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. So let's suppose if I'm taking a picture. Uh, so this is how they look. I mean, I know Samsung takes a little bit more punchier photo, but even when we are taking photos yesterday, my partner thought this phone is taking much better picture, but actually the results are different, which I will show you later. But if you just look at the picture side by side, this looks a little bit more dull and this looks more punchy. So that's the difference. And I know a lot of people will say that you can turn this off in going setting from vivid to natural. Trust me, this will only make it a little bit more dull. I can show you that. If you just go in the display setting, and you can change it to the neutral but it doesn't make it as good so i'd like to keep it in this so if you are a creator you want realistic color i think you will still prefer this because it will tell you exactly what sort of pictures you're taking but if you are a normal consumer like me i think you will enjoy these displays much better because look how vibrant they are there is one more thing I appreciate about iPhone that is it does support Dolby Vision as compared to HDR10 Plus on this. So if I'm watching content on Netflix, uh, the most it can go is HDR and which is okay. HDR10 Plus is also fine, but most of the contents are short nowadays is going to be in Dolby Vision. So as you can see, it shows Dolby Vision. Um, I know on a smaller screen doesn't matter a lot, but if you are someone who was nitpicking about the HDR content, I think iPhone is going to be slightly better in that department. Speakers are great on both of these phones. So I think the iPhone has a little bit more depth, but otherwise they both are clear and loud. So listen to this. See, all of that is great in every flagship phone. I mean, you get AMOLED display, you get high refresh rate display, you get good speakers. But the biggest gap between Android and iPhone has been the performance. I mean, it was. I think this year, finally, with Snapdragon 8 Jet 2, Android has caught up with iPhone. I'm not going to do performance tests because you will find that in many videos. But that's not how I judge a phone. For me, it's going to be day-to-day -day performance, fluidity, animation, and that matters the most iOS 16 hasn't been a flawless experience from the start but Android 13 even on Pixel has been really good and with One UI 5.1 on this phone with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has been performing really good for me. And I also think that A16 is less efficient than Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has been running cooler for me. It is still sort of winter I mean and we are going into summer I mean you can see the half t-shirt. But uh, I will let you know about the performance in the long run. But so far, they both are not heating up for me. But if I just talk about the efficiency, I think Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, even with the overnight battery drain, has been really good. So I think that is working fine. Uh, but if you really want 
the phone to perform a little bit more cooler you can always switch to the light profile so the light profile will just reduce the higher clock cpu but you will not face any sort of problem in day-to-day -day difference but when you're going to do the gaming it's going to uh, stop it automatically so you don't have to worry about that the only issue in the samsung phone even right now is going to be the shutter lag that has not been fixed and that has nothing to do with the performance itself Let's talk about the charging first and then I will talk about the battery life. So they both support like 25 watt wired and 20 watt wired charging and 15 watt wireless both of them. Uh, and the charging speed depends upon what sort of charger you have. So uh, with a 68 watt charger I'm using the same charger on both. It takes around 1 hour 20 minutes because it can go up to 25 watt and this can go up to 20 watt. So it takes around 1 hour 40 minutes on this. So on wired I think this is slower. Uh, but if I talk about wireless charging I have a Banks cooling MagSafe charger so it takes around 2 hours on this and a slightly over 2 hours on this with the 15 watt wireless charger that is given by Samsung itself. So it totally depends upon charger but if you want a little bit faster charging I think this is going to be a better bet. Now let's talk about the biggest reason I always go back to iPhones and that is going to be the battery. So this year I got iPhone 14 Pro because I was expecting a better battery life because iPhone 13 Pro was performing great and I had very low expectation from S23. Yes, I know Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 was coming but it is still a relatively smaller battery in an Android phone. But uh, to my surprise, both of them did not do what I was expecting from them. So iPhone 14 Pro kind of disappointed me. I mean, it doesn't even give me as good as battery life as 13 Pro. And S23 is surprisingly giving me as good as battery life of this iPhone 14 Pro. See, iPhone 14 Pro is still great. I mean, uh, I still have the battery life. Uh, health of 100% and I can easily get over 6 to 7 hours on screen on time on this which is not bad for this size of phone uh, but the same thing I can say about this S23 right now uh, so yeah I, there is nothing wrong with iPhone 14 Pro but I think S23 has been giving a really good battery life when it compared to any Android phone in this size See, I'm not saying S23 is better than iPhone 14 Pro in terms of battery life. You will still get a little bit better battery on iPhone 14 Pro. But for this size on an Android phone, it is actually amazing. So if you're okay with one day battery phone with moderate usage, I think you can go with any of them and you won't be disappointed. Before we talk about the last deciding factor, I just want to talk about the basic stuff. So the haptic motor is better on iPhone 14 Pro. The cellular reception is better on S23. I never face any call drop on any of them. The Wi-Fi speeds are great on both of them. They both support Wi-Fi 6 and they both have 5G and the speeds are almost similar. So for the basic thing, I don't think you're going to be facing any sort of issues. The biggest difference you can find in both of them is going to be the cameras and no it's not the hardware it's the camera processing that is different. So let's start with the video performance I think that has been improved a lot and then we'll talk about the photos. I'm recording from the front camera on both the phone so this is S23 4K 30 frames and this is iPhone 4K 30 frames. I'm going in the sun and you can see the dynamic range sun is behind me. I'm recording the audio from both of the phones so you can also decide how it works. Uh, I can switch the camera to the rear three, but I cannot do that with the... Uh, so, here's that. So this is the rear camera performance from both of the phones. There is a lot of noise, so you can see the audio recording from both of the phones. This is 4K 30 frames per second. I'm walking right now. You can see the HDR and everything if you want to just see the colors. This is how it looks. I'm going to go in the sunlight, so you'll see the HDR performance. And this is how it looks. This is the sun. Yeah. So this is the quality of the video. The videos have definitely improved. It is still not as good as the iPhone. But the biggest improvement I've seen in S23 series is the stabilization. And there are barely any jitters while walking. Even in the artificial lighting, I feel S23 is performing slightly better. As you can see here, the video is quite stable and the jerks are minimal. And that has never been the case with Samsung phones. So this is 8K 30 frames per second from S23. As you can see the quality has been improved a little bit. I cannot comment right now. I will see that later. Sorry for the noise. But now I'm walking slowly so you can see the quality. So this is 8K. If you think you can use it. This is the quality. Let's start with the photos now. And I will start with human subject first. 
the colors are better captured by iPhone here. And as I was mentioning in the display section that S23 will show that it has taken better picture, but that is not always the case. The details and the color tone are better captured in iPhone. It doesn't mean it'll look better. S23 can produce eye-pleasing image, but they are not accurate. In the next shot, iPhone was able to keep the subject in better light and the HDR is also decent. With Samsung, there will always be a struggle to maintain the dynamic range and the main subject. So the foreground might seem a little bit darker time to time. And you can also see the focal length difference between all the cameras. In the next picture, surprisingly, iPhone has captured slightly better skin tone. There is more red hue in Samsung picture. Even my jeans color is much better in iPhone. But Somehow, I still like the Samsung picture better because it looks a little bit brighter than iPhone. Like I said, the focal length between all the lenses is different. Even in this portrait 3x shot, the iPhone was zooming less as compared to S23. So I had to go back just to fit her in the picture. And even then, I think iPhone is doing a much better job in terms of details and colors. S23 picture feels a little bit softer, even though the edge detection is better on Samsung. So for portrait, I would suggest using the One X, it will give you better quality and the edge detection there is also good. Selfie camera is somehow not great on S23. It's a new sensor, but it is not producing great image. The image looked washed out and the details are better on iPhone. The iPhone had that issue where it will create a red skin. But even then, I think the front camera is better on iPhone overall. It captures more details and even the contrast is better. When it comes to ultra wide, they both are similar in terms of details, but the HDR is better on Samsung. But like I said before, the foreground might get dark time to time to save the dynamic range. Normally in ultra wide, they will perform equally. Apart from the color temperature, there will not be a lot of differences. But in high dynamic range situation, Samsung will start messing up the foreground. Like in this picture, S23 changed my car color from green to black. And even in the next picture, the trees look saturated on S23. The back of the car is washed out and the front is more dark. If I talk about the telephoto lens, they both are 3x, but they will have a different focal length. iPhone will produce sharper image with decent color temperature. As you can see, the chair has more details and even the stuff written on board behind has more details. But that doesn't mean S23 is bad in any way. The 3x photos in daylight are good and can compete with any phone. Now let's talk about the main sensor. The story is kind of similar here. You will see some saturated pictures with eye-pleasing dynamic range. There will be a little bit over sharpening, which I'm not a fan of, but you will see a better dynamic range. I think with the main sensor, you cannot go wrong with any of them. There is one big issue with iPhone 14 Pro sensor that the close focusing distance is somehow bad and it will keep shifting to macro. And when you shift to the macro mode, you will lose that beautiful bokeh in the background. Apart from that, both main sensors produce great images. Samsung somehow overexpose all the time, so I have to tone down the brightness sometimes. And it will also try to produce warmer pictures. But in terms of details, they both are good. Samsung will do over sharpening time to time. But you will only notice these details while comparing this camera side by side. Now I know for a lot of people, Samsung will be an instant pick. And it is because of the high dynamic range and I think the punchy colors. If you are a social media creator and if you shoot in Pro Row, I think this is going to be a better device if you want more details. But otherwise, if you're a normal consumer like me or just want to post the photos in the default mode, I think Samsung will be a better buy in that case. So now that I've compared both of these devices, let's talk about the price and the winner. I'm not going to compare the ecosystem right now because they both are great in terms of ecosystem. Samsung works great with other Samsung devices and Windows laptop and we all know about the Apple ecosystem. Uh, I just want to talk about the device. So I think iPhone is great. It's a little bit more premium. You have better camera performance. You get better video in daylight. And also the Dolby Vision is slightly better than the HDR10+. Plus. But overall, I think it's a boring device. And the biggest difference this year is going to be the dynamic island, which I don't use anymore. The only reason I will pick iPhone over Android is going to be the app support. I still think the app support on iOS is much better, whether you're talking about social media apps or even basic apps like banking. But lack of services like Apple Pay in India automatically pushes me towards Android and especially 
Samsung because it has a lot of services there. And the only reason I'm keeping my iPhone is going to be because of this Apple Watch Ultra. I really love this watch and I don't like the latest offering from Samsung in terms of watches. So um, I will still keep an iPhone, uh, but this is cellular. So I am not going to carry my iPhone with me. I will always carry my Android if I'm going out because rest of the services are shared. And if I need to just see SMS or calls, I can just do it on my watch. So I'll be keeping my iPhone at home. I can easily sell this phone and get a smaller phone like 13 mini or iPhone SE. But uh, it's good to keep the latest phone to do comparison like this. So yeah, I am going to keep an iPhone as my primary phone, but it will be at home and I will be carrying my S23 every single day. So I think you already know the winner, but I'm still going to tell you. So I think S23 is a much better value in terms of price and the things it offers. I got this phone for half the price of iPhone 14 Pro and this is 128 GB and this is 256 GB. If you are in US and paying those $200 are worth for iMessage and services like that, I think it is a good phone. There is no problem with that. But everywhere else, I still think the S23 will be a much, much better value. Do let me know what will you choose and if you enjoyed this video, please consider interacting with it. A like, comment or subscribe will be appreciated. But your time was enough. Have an amazing day. My name is Rohit. I'll see you next one. Till then.